All right, now we're live. Uh, sergeants, will you begin your recordings? PC recording is underway. Cloud has started. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Sergeant Leonardo, you may begin to open. Good afternoon. And welcome to the remote New York City Council hearing for the subcommittee on landmarks, public sightings, and dispositions. At this time, we ask that all council members and council staff turn on their video for verification purposes. To minimize disruptions, please place cell phones and electronic devices to silent or vibrate. Thank you, Chair Riley. We're ready to begin. Good afternoon. I'm Council Member Kevin Riley, Chair of the Subcommittee on Landmarks, Public Sightings, and Dispositions. I am, I am joined remotely today by Council Member Cuombo, Council Member Miller, Council Member Ku, Council Member Barron, and Council Member Miller, Gibson, excuse me. Today, prior to our votes, we will be hearing an amendment to a previously approved Article 11 tax exemption for the South Portland project related to property in Brooklyn and LU 759 for property in the Bronx. I recognize the council once again to explain today's hearing procedures. Thank you, Chair Riley. I am Angelina Martinez Rubio, counsel to the subcommittee for today. Members of the public who wish to testify were asked to register for today's hearing. If you register to testify and are not yet signed into Zoom, please sign in now and remain signed in until after you have testified. If you wish to testify and have not registered, please go to www.council.nyc.gov to sign up now. If you are not planning to testify on today's items, please watch the hearing on the New York City Council website. All people testifying before the subcommittee will be on mute until they are recognized to testify. Please confirm that your mic is unmuted before you begin speaking. Public testimony will be limited to two minutes per witness. If you have written testimony, you would like the subcommittee to consider in addition to or in lieu of appearing before the subcommittee, or if you require an accessible version of today's presentation, uh, please email land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or project name in the subject line of the email. During the hearing, council members who would like to ask questions should use the Zoom raise hand function. The raise hand button should appear at the bottom of the participant panel. I will announce council members who have questions in the order that they raise their hands. Witnesses are reminded to remain in the meeting until they are excused by the chair. Lastly, there may be extended pauses if we encounter technical problems. We ask that you please be patient as we work through these issues. Chair Riley will now continue with today's agenda. Thank you, Angelina. I now open today's public hearing on pre-considered application number 2025 15023 HAK submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and the development related to the previously approved South Portland project. This application requests approval of an amendment to resolution 425 for the year 2018 to amend a previously approved Article 11 tax exemption to exempt community facility space located on Block 2003. Lot 37 in the Brooklyn Council District, represented by Majority Leader Cumble. And before we begin, I just want to allow Majority Leader Cumble to give any words, if she would like. Thank you, Chair Riley. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Majority Leader. Wonderful. Thank you so much for hosting this important hearing. This is a critically important project to me, as we are uh, many of the members are beginning to wind down our term. I certainly wanted to see this particular project um, over the finish line because of just how important it is to my community. I'm happy to be here this afternoon once again to express my strong support for the Hanson Place Community Plaza development on South Portland Avenue. I want to add that this is one of the um, oldest churches in my district. It was also a stop on the Underground Railroad. It was a place for abolitionist activity, and it is one of the oldest uh, African-American and Caribbean uh, Seventh-day Adventist churches in Brooklyn, New York, uh, serving a community uh, that is very much in need. They are known for their food pantries, their clothing banks, their clothing drives. They are also known in terms of disasters that happen um, being the recovery agent within New York City 
um, when disasters hit Caribbean uh, countries, which happen far too often. And so this is a critically important uh, opportunity for the Hanson Place Seventh-day Adventist Church in order to be able to continue the dynamic work that they are doing in a highly gentrifying community. Nearly three years after the city council originally approved the project with this minor amendment, it will finally be ready to complete financing with HPD and break ground. This partnership between the Hanson Place Seventh-day Adventist Church and MDG Development Group will produce over 60 low-income affordable housing units for formerly homeless, 40 moderate income affordable housing units, and over 18,000 square foot of community facility space for social services, health services, and general community programming by the church, which I previously mentioned. In this part of my district, just outside downtown Brooklyn, so much luxury development has happened in recent years with few connections to the longstanding local community. I only wish there were more projects like this one in my district because affordable housing is so scarce within my community. We need to help preserve and enhance longstanding community institutions like the Hanson Place Church. I'd like to thank HPD for putting the finishing touches on this project and I urge my fellow council members to support this project. Thank you so much. And it is an honor to be here today. And I thank you so much, Chair Riley, uh, for hosting this important committee hearing. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks, Majority Leader. Council, please call the applicant panel. The applicant panel for South Portland is Libby Rolfing, Nina Ricci, Stephen Williams, and Philip Petrie from HBD. Council, please administer the affirmation, please. Uh, can the applicants please raise their right hands and state their name for the record? Elizabeth Rolfing. Nina Ritchie. Bill Petrie. Thank you. Before you begin, please Stephen state your name. Stephen Williams. All right, Chair, I'm going to administer the affirmation now. We were waiting to unmute one of the applicants. Um, so now, um, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in your testimony before the subcommittee and an answer to all council member questions? I do. I do. Thank you. Before you begin, please state your name and affiliation again for the record, and then you may begin. Great. Thank you, Chair Riley. My name is Elizabeth Rolfing. I'm the Chief of Staff for the New York City Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development. Um, this land use item consists of an amended tax exemption for South Portland, a proposed affordable housing development at 14250 South Portland Avenue, Block 2003, Lot 37, which we define as the exemption area in the Fort Greene neighborhood of Brooklyn in Council District 35. On June 28, 2018, the council approved resolution number 425, which authorized a tax exemption for the exemption area that is applicable to all of the land and buildings, but excludes portions, if any, devoted to business, commercial, or community facility use. We are now seeking to amend the prior resolution to also, also exempt a portion of the community facility space in the exemption area. The community facility space will be a medical facility operated by a third party healthcare provider. Also since the approval, the project has changed from fee simple ownership to leasehold interest through a long-term ground lease. In addition, the New York City Housing Development Corporation or HDC will now be a party to the regulatory agreement. Therefore, HPD is before the subcommittee seeking an amendment to the prior resolution to exempt from, from ta taxation, a portion of the community facility space in the exemption area to add HDC as a party to the regulatory agreement and to reflect the leasehold interest of the ownership structure in order to facilitate the creation of this affordable housing development. And with that, I would love to turn it over to the development team for their presentation. Thank you. Uh, my name is Stephen Williams, a project manager for MDG, uh, working on a South Portland uh, community plaza development. Um, can I bring up the uh, the the uh, PowerPoint, please? Just so, thank you. Yeah, um, this is a, a quick rendering of the project. Um, the, the building will be a 13-story 
uh, building consisting of 104 units of affordable housing. As the council, as the majority leader uh, mentioned, there will be uh, over 61 units that will be affordable. Um, and those affordability will, will have uh, 16 units that's affordable to families earning up to 40% of the AMI, 26 units um, for families earning up to 50% of the AMI, and 19 units for uh, families earning up to 60% of the AMI. Um, the, the remaining 42 units will be affordable to families uh, between 120 and 140 AMI. The, uh, the uh, breakdown of the units, uh, of the 106 units, we will have 16 studio units, uh, 56 one bedroom, 22 bedroom units, 11 three bedrooms, for a total of 103 units. Uh, we will have one super unit, uh, which will be a two bedroom to round out the, uh, the site. Did you um, try to advance the slides? I, sorry. I can't, I can't. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah. You just, you can let them know when you want to advance the slides. And they'll, and they'll okay, you can, you can advance. One more. Yeah, this, I was just went through the uh, unit breakdown. Um, and again, to reiterate that there'll be uh, 16 units that will be uh, affordable to households earning up to 40% of the AMI, um, 26 units uh, for households earning up to 50% of the AMI and 60, uh, 19 units uh, for families earning up to 60% uh, of AMI. Since this project was first presented, we have gone back and made the affordability deeper. Um, and it also comes along with 26 uh, permanently affordable housing through the mandatory inclusionary housing uh, 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 zoning um, approval that, that was uh, given through, through the ULIP. So we have a uh, deep affordability uh, within the project. He, you can advance the... Uh, and uh, for our local hiring and, and minority uh, business uh, participation, we will be working with the, uh, the uh, Build Up program and hire an NYC. Our general contractor will be Latier uh, Contracting, and they have a lot of experience in meeting and exceeding this, these, uh, these uh, target um, hiring, uh, the target hiring. Um, so we, we are, we're very positive that we'll be able to exceed that um, in a, our track record and working and providing uh, opportunities for minority business and, and local hires. Um, we've been able to exceed and, and th this will be a part of this project going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Are you, it's at the end of the presentation? Yeah, it was only four slides. I wanted to really hone in on affordability and um, the, the, the overview of the project. And, and just to ensure that we are meeting those, those guidelines for the uh, minority participation and that that's a big part of this, this uh, overall project. Thank you. Uh, before I go into my questions, Majority Leah, do you have any questions for this applicant panel? I do not. I stand in full support of this particular project. We've been meeting now. Um, while you're talking about three years, I've actually been working on this project for 10 years, if you can believe it. I've only been in office eight. So um, this is a project that I'm in uh, full support with. Um, it began with uh, pa Pastor Melwin Mounter, who was the pastor at the time of the church. and. We began talking about this project as a concept and as I, an idea um, almost 10 years ago now. So it's a, it's a very important project. And another reason why I'm particularly proud of this project is because it is the only project that I have approved that is a uh, majority ownership stake and beneficiaries are of the African-American community and Caribbean community. And this will be the first time in this particular district where a project like this um, in the driver's seat is an African-American owned uh, Seventh-day Adventist church. And so I'm quite proud of it. And I know that this will certainly be an anchor um, for many communities of color who are feeling the 
rapidness of displacement throughout the city. Thank you, Majority Leader. And I just have two quick questions for the, the panel and then I'll see if my colleagues have any questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, this is not the first time council has had to approve amendments to Article 11, tax exemptions in order to extend the exemptions to the community facility portion of a development. Is HPD making efforts to try to make sure this specific issue is included in the original improvements, uh, approvals where applicable? Um, Libby, would you like me to respond to that one? That would be great. Thanks, Dina. Yeah, um, I, I think generally that the answer is yes. We try to make sure that the package is reflective of the project. Um, and when this originally went, um, the community facility space was not anticipated to be part of the exemption area. Um, we now are requesting to include it, um, but we do want to make sure, you know, generally speaking, that our packages um, are accurate. Thank you, Nina. And my last question, uh, can you explain the change in ownership structure that took place since the original approval? Yes, it was a fee simple uh, uh, set, uh, ownership and it has been changed to a, a ground lease ownership, which uh, was changed the nature of, of how the, how the, uh, the, the financing um, of the project would, would work. It, um, that was the major change. It went from a fee simple to a ground lease. Thank you, Steve. I uh, just want to acknowledge we have been joined by Council Member Traeger. I now invite my colleagues to ask questions. Council, are there any council members with any questions? Council Member Barron has a question. Council Member Barron. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to the panel for coming and having your presentation. In terms of the units, that 41% of the units, I understand, are ranging from 120 to 140% of the AMI, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And what is the unit distribution across each of the AMI's groups that we're talking about? Um, if there's a, let me pull it up. There's a 16% of the units are of the up to 40% AMI. Yes. Uh, I have that. My question okay. is more towards the unit size distribution across the AMI groups. Oh, uh, it's it's spread. Let me pull it up. I okay. Um, we have uh, the the breakdown. Uh, uh, if you look at the the uh, 40% AMI, it's spread, uh, you have two, two, two studios, uh, nine one bedrooms, three two bedrooms, and two three bedrooms across the 40% uh, uh, AMI. If you're looking at the 50% AMI, we have uh, three studios, 11, uh, I'm sorry, five studios, 13 one bedrooms, six two bedrooms and two three bedrooms. For the 60% AMI, we have three studios, 11 one bedrooms, three two bedrooms, uh, two three bedrooms. And for the zero, uh, 120 to 140% uh, AMIs, we have six studios, 23 one bedrooms, eight two bedrooms, five three bedrooms. So it's pretty spread across the, uh, the, the full thing. There's, not, there's no real concentration of uh, one type of unit in one uh, AMI level. Uh, that's good to know. I, see, I thank you for that. Uh, but I do notice that it's uh, in terms of those who are going to be making 120, a requirement for $120,000 to $140,000 represents 40% of the, of the population. Thank you very much for answering the questions. 
Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Well, if, Madam, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, can I ask another question? Sure. sure. So in terms of the exemption for taxation, it's for a portion of, uh, it's been presented as representing a portion of the community space. So it does not apply to the other space within this development? That's correct. Um, we anticipate that the community facility space to be used by the church will receive a separate tax payment. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Are there any more questions for any council members? Uh, Chair, Chair, I don't see any high hands raised. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't raise my hand, but can you hear me? Oh, yes, ahead. we can hear you. Um, just wanted to say that in this particular project, which is quite unusual for our district, that 60% uh, in my particular district being considered in this way, 60% are going to be units for low income housing. Uh, this isn't a typical 30% um, or 25%. This is going to produce 60% of the units are going to be for low income. Um, 16 of those units are gonna be for formerly homeless families. Um, for example, individuals get receiving section eight and then 26 of the units are gonna be at 50 AMI, 19 of the units are gonna be at 60 AMI and 42 of the units are gonna be at 120, 140 AMI. So over a long period of negotiation, we were able to get that number to 60% of affordability, but the remaining 40%, um, the church investing in this project and wanting to utilize their property in a highly gentrifying community, which is very, we are ground zero for gentrification. Um, they need this particular income from the 40% to offset the costs of the church at this time. So they have uh, an educational program, they have a school, they also have a food pantry, they also do distribution of clothing drives, they do a lot of community programming um, within the district where their costs and the, and the cost of operating the church in this district with a population that's being gentrified, they certainly need the ability to offset some of the costs in this particular district, um, which is very different from many other districts who are not facing a lot of the challenges. So that is the reason for the 40% AMI um, being at the higher end of the affordable spectrum. Um, but again, this is an opportunity for this church um, to sustain themselves. Um, and to be viable, and this is one of the main strategies that they've chosen to do this, um, with a lot of uh, push and pull uh, through uh, community negotiations and dynamics. So thank you. Thank you, Majority Leader. There being no more questions for this panel, this panel is excused. Thank you. Thank you. Council, are there any members of the public who wish to testify? Chair, the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for members. Okay. Chair, it appears that there are no members of the public who wish to testify on this item. Thank you, Council. There being no other members of the public who wish to testify on this item, the public app hearing on application number 202-15023-HAK, the South Portland Article 11 Amendment is now closed. I now open the public hearing on LU 759, the 97th West 169th Street proposal which was also heard on April 21st. If you are here to testify on LU 759, please raise your hand now. 
Council, is there anyone registered to speak on this item? Uh, Chair, uh, once again, the meeting will briefly stand at ease while we check for members of the public. Thank you. Chair, there are no witnesses here to testify on this item. Thank you, Council. There being no witness to testify on this item, the public hearing on LU759 is now closed. We will now move on to our votes. We will vote to approve application number 202-15023-HAK, the South Portland Article 11 Amendment to exempt community facility space located on Block 2003 Lot 37 in the Brooklyn Council District represented by Majority Leader Cuomo. We will also vote to approve LU 759, the 97th West 169th Street project. This application was submitted by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development requesting the designation of property located at 97 West 169th Street in the Bronx as an urban development action area as well as the approval of an urban development action area project for such area and disposition of such property to a developer to be selected by HPD. These actions will facilitate the development of a nine story building containing approximately 104 affordable housing units and community facility space. This project is located in the council district represented by council member Vanessa Gibson. We will vote to approve LU 760, the Landmark Preservation Commission designation of the Harry and Thomas Truesdale House, located at 227 Duffield Street in Brooklyn as an historic landmark. This site is significant as the home of a prominent abolitionist and is believed by some to have been a stop of the Underground Railroad it is located in Council Member Levine's district. We will also vote to approve to two items to facilitate phase two of the Sendero Verde project approved by the council in 2017. We will vote to approve LU 761 for the amendment of a previously approved of an urban development action area project. We will also approve LU 762 to amend a previously approved article 11 tax exemption. The previously approved project will have included approximately 652 dwelling units, approximately 36,218 square feet of commercial space, and approximately 161,440 square feet of community facility space. The amend project will include approximately 707 dwelling units approximately 6,213 square feet of commercial space and approximately 87,278 square feet of community facility. The affected property is located at 1617 Lot 20, 120, 125, and 140 in the Manhattan Council District represented by Council Member Ayala. And before we call the roll, I just would like to acknowledge Council Member Gibson to give any of your remarks regarding her project issue. Council Member Gibson. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair Riley. And good afternoon, everyone, to all my colleagues on the subcommittee. I thank you so much for the opportunity. I want to speak in support of land use application 759 before the subcommittee today, known as the Corporal Fisher Park Affordable Senior Housing Project to be located in my council district at 97 West 169th Street. Um, as you have heard during the public hearing, this proposal by HPD uh, will be built by the West Side Federation for Senior and Supportive Housing and will be developing about 15,000 square feet of mixed 
and extremely affordable housing for seniors in my council district located in the Highbridge community. I'm grateful that this building will offer both a combination of studio and one bedroom units. 30% of these units will be set aside for formerly homeless seniors, uh, while all the units will receive project-based section eight. All tenants will only pay 30% of their income towards rent. Um, together, our efforts in the city council, we must continue to keep New York City truly affordable for our older New Yorkers. And certainly as the Bronx becomes an attractive destination for new investments, it is our responsibility to ensure a quality of life for all of our older residents. Um, with today's vote, you are ensuring that our older residents in the Bronx and beyond can afford to remain in this city. I'm especially proud of this project known as Corporal Fisher Senior Apartments that will provide an FQHC that will be operated by Damien Family Health Center, on-site social services, which means our residents will receive holistic wraparound social services, mental health, primary care, uh, and holistic services for their needs. There will be on-site management, 24-hour security, laundry services, recreation space, outdoor terrace, and a myriad of services for our seniors. This project was a part of the Jerome Neighborhood Plan that the council passed back in 2017. And I'm really grateful for my colleagues in the state legislature, State Senator Jose Marco Serrano and Assemblywoman Latoya Joyner for also supporting this project. The Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz Jr. and his team, as well as Bronx Community Board 4. I am grateful that this project will bring over 100 units of affordable senior housing for residents in our district, as well as the larger community, because that's exactly what we should be doing as legislators. So I thank you, Chair Riley, for your leadership in holding today's hearing. And I thank all the members of the subcommittee and ask you to vote in the affirmative for this project so we solidify our continued commitment to providing real affordable housing for our older New Yorkers in the Bronx and beyond. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Council, please call the roll. Chair Riley. Yes. Council Member Koo. Can we unmute Council Member Koo? Um, I'll move on and I'll call on Council Member Ben. I... Oh, <laughs> sorry, Council Member Koo, we hear you. Can I you hear you. me? Yes, I got you. Yeah, I got a problem. Yeah. Okay, I will aye. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Thank you. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I want to talk briefly on the 227 Duffield Street project. I believe that's on the council calendar today for a vote. Yes. Uh, it was in 2007 that the city announced that they were going to do an urban development plan for downtown Brooklyn, which as we see today is manifested by tall skyscrapers and buildings that are there that are not affordable at all to the people who previously lived in that community. So that downtown Brooklyn supposedly urban development project went way off the tracks and resulted in what we see now. But as a part of that plan in 2004, there was a proposal to demolish 227 Duffield Street. And there were three council members at that time, council member Barron, council member uh, Van, and council member James, who said, no, we need to make sure that a study is done so that we can make sure we're not destroying history because it was believed that 227 was a part of that underground railroad that helped to uh, have so many of those who were enslaved escape slavery. So the Economic Development Corporation did a study and their study concluded that perhaps it might've been, but it did not warrant maintaining that property. There was a vigorous, vigorous fight to maintain that property. Uh, they called her Mama Joy. Joy Chattel was the owner of that property. And she had many people who came and mobilized with her to fight to preserve that property. Through many efforts and through many years of fighting, 
the property went back and forth in terms of would it be demolished, would it be landmark, would it be torn down? And I just want to say that through the valiant efforts of so many people who worked to preserve that property, the Landmarks Commission did landmark it, and now we're moving forward to make this a historic landmark. And uh, it's particularly important to me because I had an aunt that I used to visit who lived one block over from Duffield Street within those same two blocks. So the area is quite familiar to me. And I wish I had known then that it was suspected to be an area of what was a hotbed of, of people who were abolitionists. Because I would have asked my auntie, can I go downstairs in the basement and see what's down there? But we're certainly glad that this is coming forward. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Miller. Council Member Miller votes aye. And Council Member Traeger. Aye. Aye, a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. All items are approved and recommended for approval to the full land use committee. Thank you, Council. That concludes today's business. I remind you that if you have a written testimony on today's items, you may submit it to land use testimony at council.nyc.gov. Please indicate the LU number or the project name in the subject heading. I would like to thank the applicants, members of the public, my colleagues, subcommittee council, land use staff, and the Sergeants of Arms for participating in today's hearing. This meeting is hereby adjourned.